The work that we're going to analyse today is Durain's London Bridge. Um, it's an oil painting created in 1906, and it's relatively small. It's about a metre by 66. I think it's smaller than um, the pieces that you made this term. So this piece, if we read here, it says that it was commissioned by his art dealer, um, this man here, and to paint various views of London. And it's said that he did city paintings. So London Bridge actually looked something like this. So when we do look at Durain's piece, you'll see that there is lots of traffic and there's some barges and little riverboats actually going through and underneath the bridge. So I found these images on the internet. Um, this first one here um, is from the MoMA Museum, the Museum of Modern Art, which actually owns this piece by André Durain. This piece is another one, and then this one. And it just shows you how um, the colours vary so much on the internet. But I think I'm going to go with this one, because I think that one um, will be just easier to, to discuss. I think this one's too bright, and this one's perhaps a little bit too dull. So in terms of description, this artwork is a high viewpoint of a river, obviously influenced by Japanese art with that high viewpoint, with boats. So the two boats are here. And traffic on top of the bridge. There are some little things here. So these things, I think, could be little figures. I'm not quite sure. But we know that it's definitely a lot of traffic on the top of that that bridge. And then in the background, you've got a whole lot of buildings, just a view of London. In terms of influence, this artwork's definitely been um, influenced by the post-impressionists. So color of Van Gogh and Gauguin, this outlining of the, the bridge and all the different shapes and, well, you can't really call them forms, they're more shapes, um, is definitely influenced by Gauguin and his cloisonism, um, also influenced by contemporary photography. We've seen that link in that image that I showed you earlier. And just contemporary life, or life in London at that time. So it's all about industrialization and how busy the city is. In terms of formal analysis, um, if we look at the colour, colour creates harmony and unity because there's a repetition of colours throughout. So we have the, the reds being repeated right throughout the artwork, and maybe these reds sort of relate to the orange. So that creates a sense of um, harmony and unity. The colours are all very bright, and they tend to work together. They are um, primary colours, so you've got the yellows, you've got the blues, um, you've got the reds. Sorry, I almost forgot what the <laughs> last primary colour was. And then you've got the complementary, so you've got the blue and the orange complementing one another. You've got the red and the green. And there's no purple, but I suppose there's purplish colours over here that complement the yellow. The second element of art that you can discuss in this piece is the element of line. There are lots of curved lines, the lines are very strong, everything is outlined. Um, there is a bit of broken line, um, but I don't think Durain is too worried about um, creating realism here. Remember, Fauvism is just about, about colour. He's just mapping out shapes in this piece. So line, I think, is used to create a sense of vitality. So there's implied lines here in the water. Um, you've got this very strong diagonal, which always creates action. Um, you've got a bit of a horizontal line at the, the top. But I think everything is suggesting action, motion, rhythm and movement. Lots of repetition of lines, lines here, that will create a rhythm or movement in this piece. In terms of shape, there's some very simplified shapes. 
So there's that boat and there's this strange little figure here. Um, this is a very weird shape. I'm not sure what it's meant to be. One of my classes said it looks like the Grim Reaper on a rowing boat, but um, I don't think it, it's that. It, I mean, it's just so weird. It could be a shark. It, should, it could be a submarine, which didn't actually exist at that time, I don't think. So, um, yeah, just some very strange shapes. So everything is quite simplified. Everything, I think, is in proportion. So you've got this large bridge, you've got all the little the little figures, and you've got the traffic on the bridge, and then you've got the, the houses in the background. So everything does seem to be in proportion. I think the word to use for a lot of these shapes is stylized, simplified. And then the last element that I, um, I'm going to discuss is space and focal point. So in terms of space, he has created space because there is overlap, so you can see that one thing is behind the other. Um, the forms get smaller as they go into the distance, so there is space there. In terms of the canvas space, so if we're dividing the canvas up, right in the middle there's this red shape and I think that's the focal point of the piece. Well, it's definitely, it looks like these, these boats in the foreground. So the space in the foreground becomes the, the focal point. The one strange thing in terms of space, so he has used warm colors in the foreground and then he's used cooler colors in the background, but then he's, he's made this very intense orange sky and this flattens the space again and then creates that sense of autonomy that was introduced by Cezanne. And finally, the purpose of this painting is to capture a moment of life at that time in London, but it's also an excuse to play with brush marks, play with, with colour.